Hello you guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to August's reading wrap up. This month actually was such a good reading month for me. I read a total of seven books this month and I read three Kindle books and I read four physical books. I realized that um, I read way more when I'm splitting my time between my Kindle app and physical books. I don't know what it is. I feel like if I feel like a book's going too slow, like a physical book, I can like speed through Kindle books. It's because I read really like cheesy romances on there mostly and I feel like that's why it goes so fast. But anyways, like I said, I had a whole bunch of great reads this month, so let's get started into them. Now, the books I read at the beginning of the month, kind of a fever dream at this point. There's only one in particular that I like really remember what it's about. So let's start with the first book that I read in the month of August, and that was The Family Remains by Lisa Jewell. So basically this entire book follows the first one. So this is a sequel to The Family Upstairs. The Family Upstairs is a great book. I think I rated it four and a half stars, and I highly, highly recommend it. This book follows directly after that and it follows the same exact family basically a mystery that is still from the first book so i don't want to say anything because it will give stuff away but to be quite honest my true feelings on this book is i feel like it didn't really need to be written and also it wasn't really that big of a mystery or a thriller there was only like certain aspects to it that were kind of a mystery that i guessed really quickly because when you read the first book you just have so much information going into this one so i feel like that first book gives you way too much information and it just kind of ruins the whole book for you because you piece things together so quickly because of all the knowledge you have from that first book. So I did make a video call trying to find a five star read and this is one of them. So my more thoughts and details throughout the entire book are in that video. So if you wanna see a little bit more in depth, then you can go to that one. And I'm gonna change my rating actually from that video because when I think back on it, it didn't, the rating I gave it, not that it didn't deserve it, I just like don't feel that way anymore. So I'm actually gonna give this book a three stars. I originally gave it four, but thinking back on it, like I just said, I think it's more deserving of a three star read because overall, like it was interesting and it kept me entertained, but it just, I just had so much information from the first book that it kind of just didn't appeal to me the same way the first one did. Like the first one was really like thrilling and very mysterious and I was, on the edge of my seat trying to figure out what was going to happen but with this one i kind of guessed some things and granted the things i guessed were wrong actual twist did not surprise me yeah unfortunately this one well not unfortunately three stars is not bad but this book i am giving a three stars for the month the i think the next book i read in the month was the wrong mr right which is the book i read on my kindle app and this book was so cute and so funny the banter was really great and the storyline is kind of basically like every other romance but it still was like a feel good summer romance read and i really really enjoyed it hannah and wyatt both live in a small town so they kind of grew up knowing each other but Hannah, you know, is getting older and she's determined to find herself a man. And she goes to Wyatt because she's like, you date a lot of hot girls and I want to be a hot girl. So I need you to teach me how to be a hot girl so that I can find myself a man. And he agrees to it. He was just like, okay, well, the one thing that you have to do is you have to take surfing lessons with me every morning so that we can talk and so I can teach you how to be a hot girl. And she's like, okay. And basically that's just of how everything begins and everything starts and as you can probably tell what happens from there this book was such a cheesy feel-good romance and i just really loved reading every second of it there were parts of it that were like kind of cringy but i feel like that's just to be expected you know and it's just the it's just the way that they talk to each other, but I find actually a lot of dialogue in books more recently very cringy. So it could just be a me thing and the way that like things are written and other people may not find them cringy. But other than that, it was very good and I very, very much enjoyed it. I ended up rating this one a four stars. Yeah, just a four stars because I just really enjoyed it and I thought it was really cute and funny and the characters together like were so swoon worthy and I just loved them together and I was rooting for them so, so much and I just thought that they worked really well together. This book actually is also part of a series. So it is the second book in the series and I did not read 
the first one or the other ones yet. They all can be read as standalones. Next up, this book. This book emotionally destroyed me. I would still recommend it to every person, every person I ever talked to, to read because of how good and how emotionally it impacted me. <laughs> and that is the way I used to be. This book follows a girl named Eden and the book is told in four parts. So basically Eden is raped by her brother's best friend and the entire book really is just all about her grieving and coping processes after what happened to her and basically going through the normal emotional downward spiraling spin of being a young girl after a traumatic event. The book is very, very good. And it's not that it's hard to read, it's just emotional. Like she really like cuts into you and rips your heart out, okay? I did cry. I cried multiple, not multiple times, I cried only twice. So more than once, clearly. And I did post a picture on my Instagram and I'll post it up here because I think it's funny. But it really did, it really ripped me open. I felt, I have never felt the way I had when I was reading this book, I really felt like I was going through all of this with her and all the emotion and anxiety that she was feeling. I was feeling it while I was reading it. Like literally there were parts where I was reading and like my heart was racing for her because of how nervous and how scared she was. And she really just like absorbed you right into the world, right into Eden's life and right into the storyline. She really ripped it apart, rips you apart. I rated this a five stars. I honestly, more like a six stars, okay? This like punched me in the face, so good. The writing was great and there is a second book coming out very, very soon. So I'm very, very excited to read it. Um, and I really hope that it lives up to this first one. Uh, granted, the storyline's gonna be obviously different because it's not, it's still gonna follow Eden, but I think it's gonna really follow like her having to relive all of the trauma that she went through. Five stars, six stars, absolutely fantastic. And I highly, highly recommend that everybody reads this book because like I said, I have never been more involved in more like feeling like I am living with this character than I have with this book. So next up we have the Baby Moon or Bust. And again, this was just another feel good kind of book. It was super quick and easy to read. It was so fast paced. This is obviously an accidental pregnancy trope, so if that's not something you're into, then obviously I would skip it. But this one, I did not, this is I think the only the second accidental pregnancy trope that I've read. And both of the ones that I read actually weren't too terrible. I know some people really don't like it, but this one I thought was a really cute, fun, different way of doing it. But granted, like I said, I've only read two, and this one's obviously different than the first one. So there could be other ones that are just like this and I just don't even realize. <laughs> so this book follows Solomon and Tessie and they meet one night at a bar and Tessie is in the mindset of just having a one night stand. So she meets Solomon at the bar and they have a one night stand and then you find out six months later that she is pregnant. And then since they had a one night stand, her and Solomon don't have any contact with each other and she couldn't find him. So she ended up booking this baby moon for herself uh, right before she has the baby so that, you know, if you know what a baby moon is. And he ends up crashing her baby moon. I thought it was a cute little funny storyline. I really liked the male character. He was very driven, very determined because he, he knew what he wanted and he went after it. And I appreciated that, okay? He was, very, very great in that aspect. He was just also so kind and understanding towards Tessie and the situation at hand. So I also really liked that aspect of it and I just liked where the story went. So I ended up rating this book a four stars as well. Again, just because it was such a cute, fun, fast paced read. I think that's also a big part in like how I rate my books. And since it was like super fast paced and entertaining, it kept me, you know, engrossed in the story. It's definitely worth a four stars. This book is very, very spicy, as well as the other book I read. I didn't mention that. They're both pretty spicy. So if you're not too into spice, but I mean, granted with the storyline, you'd have to expect that there'd be spice. Four star read, highly recommend. I think if you're looking for a quick, easy read, you should look it up. It's on Kindle Unlimited. <sighs> okay, this next book, 
And if you watched my most recent video, then you would know I went on long rants, long rants about this book. So I'm really not going to talk about it too much because I have a whole video dedicated to it basically. And that is the things we hide from the light. I did not like this book. It was so slow, so boring. Uh, nothing was really going on. And I cannot even give you a synopsis of what happened in this book. See how thick she is? She is almost 600 pages. And I could not tell you what happened. I really couldn't. What I can tell you, this is the second book in the Knock em Out series. So this book follows Nash, who is Knox's brother from the first book. And this just follows his story of finding love, basically. Well, not really love, but well, love. Yeah, because it's a romance book. But there was just too many things about this book that I did not like for me to really even recommend it to people. Um, I feel like this is definitely one you can skip in the series. Granted, the third one comes out this month, actually, which is very exciting. And I'm actually excited to read that one. You don't, they all can be read as standalones. Honestly, I think I would skip this one. This one, nothing happens. It just like took me so long to read. It took me forever. It's so slow. It just wasn't for me. The only, what I would recommend though, is if you could find the epilogues and the bonus epilogues, I'd read those because those were kind of fun, but they do kind of give away stuff for the third book. Overall, I ended up rating this one a three stars and I rated this a three stars because the ending actually is what really drew me back in and gave it the three star rating that it was getting. The ending was super fast paced and entertaining. Uh, so if you kind of remember the way that the first one ended along the same pacing lines of what happened. So it was like all this build up to the end, basically. That's how this one ended. So. I really like that. I thought it was super entertaining. Otherwise, the entire book itself was not. So the next book I read and the last Kindle book I read was How to Honeymoon Alone. This book I thought was very entertaining, very sweet, very funny. Like I said, all these Kindle books I thought were really, really great. So this book follows Eden and Philip, and they are both on their honeymoons alone. Both of them end up meeting at their honeymoon resort because they both ended up taking their honeymoons after their weddings were canceled and they were broken up with their partners. And they ended up meeting and that's really all you need to know. So if you're a fan of the unhoneymooners, I think you'd really, really like this book. This one, they're very similar, but also different enough where it's not, it doesn't feel like you're reading the same exact book. Uh, the main character, Philip, he was very chef's kiss, love him. He was fantastic. I really don't have much to say about it other than the fact that it was just really entertaining, really fast paced to read, really cute love story. I very, very much enjoyed it. I thought it was very good, like I keep saying. I also rated this one a four stars. And if that sounds anything, I'm a big romance girly. So I think that you should read some of these Kindle romances because they're very cute, very quirky. Oh, and actually something I do have to say about this book that I really appreciated was the dialogue seemed way more natural and accurate and not cringy. I don't think there was a time I cringed at all at during the dialogue, which is rare which is a very rare occasion. So I appreciate that. Anyways, uh, like I said, I read this book of four stars. I thought it was great, entertaining, loved it. I think you should read it too. <laughs> and the last book I read this month, which is a book I read in literally two days, and we all know it's coming. We all know it's coming because, well, actually maybe you don't know it's coming. I'm not gonna talk about it too much because I have a whole video dedicated to the series that is coming out very, very soon, I hope. By the time I'm filming this video, I'm only in the second book, so. I don't know how long it's gonna take me, but I'm very, very excited to be filming that video. And the last book I read for the month of August was A Court of Thorn and Roses. And like I said, I'm not gonna talk about it too much. Just that I enjoyed it. And you're gonna have to wait till that video to see what I rated this book and the rest of the series, obviously. Very much enjoyed this book. Let me just say, let me just say, I'm already obsessed. But anyways, that is all the books I read in August. Like I said, it was a really good reading month for me and I'm actually really surprised because I thought it was going off on a bad note. I thought it was gonna have a bad note, but it didn't. It actually turned out really, really well and I'm really, really happy about it. And I'm so excited for September because I have so many book 
videos planned and the type of videos that I want to film and I'm getting into spooky season so I'm so excited to start reading like fantasy and thrillers and dark academia books I'm just very excited so Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to follow me on all of my social medias as well as subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.